Kind of wild to be like featured among pre-workouts that I literally bought when I was a child, essentially. Not a child, but you know what I mean? But back in the day, you know, Derek would walk in the supplement store, go look around at the you know, look at the labels. Ooh, this one looks good. Ooh, look at that one. My buddy told this one, told me this one's sick. Get it, have no idea what the I'm talking about. And now here I am, right among the big boys, bro. So anyways, let's us uh, dismantle these one at a time. What's up guys, Derek, marplatesmart8.com. Today we're gonna to be checking out the top five ranked pre-workouts on Amazon. So this is a video I actually did back in May earlier this year and it was pretty well received. So I figured I would uh, redo it again with whatever has jumped up the ranks because the rankings are always changing and um, shit has changed since May. So back in May, these were the top five. We had Alani New, the traditional go-to chick pre-workout, Six Star, the flagship Walmart brand, C4 Sport, Total War by Redcon One, and Gold Standards um, pre-workout. So some of the top comments, uh, let's see, I'm gonna fucking load. I wish my chemistry teacher dissected <laughs> top pre-workouts in Amazon. Uh, that's funny. So basically Derek was looking at the Amazon rankings and got salty about his placement. Yeah, it wasn't, uh, I think we were ranked okay. Let me fucking, let me see actually. Um, where was Gorilla Mode in this lineup? All right, first, second. So we had C4 Sport, C4 Rip Sport, C4. Fuck, dude, C4 was just dominating the goddamn charts back then. Total War, Six Star. Uh, so I guess I just, I think I ranked like all, I don't even remember what I did. I broke down all the C4s or I just looked at the main one that was ranked first. I don't remember what I did, but um, you can check it out because I will uh, spoil it a little bit. There is only one C4 in the top five right now. So one of these is not uh, in the top five or one of these is in the top five. Two of them got kicked off in the most recent uh, update here. Oh, six was Alani new. We had the Super Beats. Gold Standard Pre, Nitro Surge, Anno Explode. Fuck, bro, that brings back memories. Some nostalgia with Anno Explode when I was in high school. Uh, where the fuck is Gorilla Mode, bro? We had um, number 11, 12, there we go. We were number 14, apparently, back in May. So I checked this like intermittently, maybe like once a month or some shit, and um, I actually noticed, believe it or not, well, actually, I won't fucking uh, ruin the surprise for you, if you go type in pre-workout on Amazon, we go see, did I mean pre-workout? Indeed, I meant whatever. It's the same shit, is it not? So Amazon's choice, gold standard pre-workout, um, psychotic, total war. All right, so let's click optimum nutrition and to check the rankings, we scroll all the way down to the bottom and we see the ranking in sports nutrition pre-workout powders. So as you can see, Boom, we are in the powder section though. I want to sort by pre-workouts in general. Boom, best sellers in sports nutrition pre-workout products. So, Gorilla Mode has actually cracked the top five, believe it or not. <laughs> fucking congratulations, Gorilla Mode. <laughs> to fucking pat myself on the back, but I can't. So, anyways, uh, Gorilla, Gorilla Mode is, uh, it actually cracked the top five when I decided to make this video. And then since then I updated the, uh, like I refreshed the browser and it jumped up to three. So that's fucking wild to see. And um, you know, it's just a matter of time, bro. Just a matter of fucking time. I'm coming for your fucking head gold standard pre-workout. But anyways, so the top 10, you know, some of it looks pretty, the jump, the, you know, the placements jump around a little bit. Like I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Gorilla Mode dropped to, you know, fucking eight or, you know, down to 14 or whatever it was again. And then, you know, things, these kind of swap back and forth. In general, the kind of main players are around the same top five though, all the time, which is gold standard pre-workout, C4 classic. Amino Lean is uh, new, Total War though. And Alani New got uh, kicked out a little bit. Six Star got kicked out a little bit by, I'm not fucking ashamed to do that because this pre-workout can literally lick my left one. It is not very good. Super Beans is uh, also quite trash and overhyped in my opinion, given the nitrate yield is fucking horrendous for the amount per bottle that you could otherwise get from literally like one fucking scoop of nitric. 
you get like the same nitrate yield as like half a tub of this shit. But anyways, so C4 Sport, C4 Sport, these uh, versions got, you know, kicked way down. But this is their flagship version of the product. Obviously the original. I even get nostalgia with some of this shit, dude. Like I've, you know, bought C4 way back when I was in high school. I bought uh, Six Star. Actually, no, I didn't. I never bought that bullshit. Um, I bought, uh, let's see, Anno Explode. I've definitely bought before many times back in, uh, well, I don't know about many times, but when I was, when I was in high school, definitely bought it. Um, at least a few times. What else do we have here? I think Gat Nitroflex was around when I was in high school too. Um, I was definitely at least tempted to buy this at one point. Um, what else is in here? I remember a Super Pump 250 was the fucking shit back in the day. Um, obviously 1MR, you guys remember that. And obviously Jack 3D, those were all go-tos back in the day. I think the first pre-workout I ever got or checked out was a bulldoze. I forget who makes that, but um, yeah, fuck. <laughs> you get nostalgia about that shit, bro. So anyways, kind of wild to be like featured among pre-workouts that I literally bought when I was a fucking child, essentially. Not a child, but you know what I mean? But back in the day, you know, fucking Derek would walk in the supplement store, go look around at the shit, you know, look at the labels. Ooh, this one looks good. Ooh, look at that one. My buddy told this one, told me this one's fucking sick. Get it? Have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. And now here I am, fucking right among the big boys, bro. So anyways, let's us uh, dismantle these one at a time. So we have uh, number one spot, gold standard pre-workout. 31,020 fucking reviews, bro. This is a behemoth. This is a heavy hitter. This is a go fuck yourself. We have 31,000 reviews product up in your business. Optimum nutrition, gold standard. Vitamin D for immune support with creatine, beta alanine, and caffeine. All right, so let's see. New look, same trusted quality. So it is indeed a updated bottle now. Now my question that I'd be wondering is are these updated lids because of the shortages on these lids? Because as you may or may not know, the supply chain issues are kind of fucking insane right now to a point where pre-workouts might actually get more expensive. You know, maybe by the time you watch this video, that won't be the case, but with everything going on in the world, shit is getting hectic. The prices of raw ingredients are going up. The prices of even fucking bottles are going up. It's hard to get the same lids you want to get normally. So you'll often know that sometimes pre-workouts that traditionally had like a smooth lid or whatever might now have a ribbed lid or maybe a product may not even have a fucking bottle at all. Maybe it comes in a bag because they can't even get enough bottles. So for example, like Redcon 1, I believe, uh, I think Aaron announced recently that they're increasing their prices. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but um, on their website, they are actually at $43 now. So... You know, I, I'm pretty sure that's higher than what it used to be. And I assume, I haven't watched the video. I don't, I don't know where he said it. I just heard it through the grapevine that it's probably because of supply chain shit, which, you know, we're feeling the fucking heat too. Trust me. So margins are getting shittier by the day. Um, gold standard pre-workout. Um, so anyways, let's, you know, just dissect that one. Let's go to Optum Nutrition Site. I've never used this product specifically. I am quite familiar with their protein powders though and some of their other stuff. Back in the day, I would get their weight gainer. Although my favorite was still Quick Mass. Quick Mass tasted fucking ridiculous. And Cyto Gainer was probably the best hybrid weight gainer slash protein powder. That was kind of like an in-between with about 500 calories per serving. Kind of irrelevant, but ultimately that is my, uh, you know, personal, if you care about what young Derek would spend his money on, uh, that's the kind of shit uh, I've, you know, would spend the bucks on, bro, or walking home with fucking 15 pound bags of mutant mass slung over my shoulders. So anyways, gold standard pre-workout for energy, performance, and focus. 175 milligrams caffeine from natural sources, three grams creatine mono per serving, 1.5 grams of butthole itches per serving, Let's get into the flavor systems. We have blueberry lemonade, fruit punch, green apple, and watermelon. Are those the only ones on the site? Let me see. So let's see it. I'm just kind of surprised that, geez, I'm kind of shocked that like the highest ranked pre-workout on Amazon only has fucking four flavors. That seems kind of wild to me. So anyway, let's get into um, this. Let's click the blueberry lemonade. Nutritional facts. All right. Hopefully you guys can even fucking read this. It's kind of small. Um, all right. Well, hopefully you can fucking read it. So 
Supplement facts. Per one scoop, there is 30 servings per, per, per bottle. Interestingly, how they market their vitamin D as like a significant attribute of the product. Like you note in the, in the title, you only have so many keywords to work with on Amazon. So you're going to pick like the heavy hitting, like what is your best attribute to your product? And the fact that they have vitamin D for immune support right in the intro, it's kind of surprising to me because that's a lot of fucking words to use up just to say you have 12.5 micrograms of vitamin D. Like to me, this is not something I give a fuck about in a pre-workout, to be honest. Thiamine, two milligrams. And I'm not saying vitamin D is not performance enhancing. It, it's fucking useful for including immune support, like they mentioned. However, 12.5 micrograms, is this something at 63% daily value? Is this something I value to have in my pre-workout? Like not fucking really. And to be honest, like this is something that, um, yeah, like to be honest, I don't even, it's totally irrelevant to me. Like I would rather get this through a separate, you know, supplement or through a multivitamin or through whatever. Like this is not, I'm not looking for like health fucking enhancing immune support shit in my pre-workout, but you know, that to each his own. Thiamine at two milligrams, niacin at 20 milligrams. Um, not specified if this is flush or not flush. Is this nicotinic acid? What is this? Vitamin B6, pyridoxine HCL. Um, I can't even fucking, I don't blame you guys if you can't read it because I can barely fucking read it. But two milligrams of that, we have uh, folate as folic acid notably, which is the most trash version of folate possible if we want a highly active form that is not going to be problematic for those with MTHFR polymorphisms. We want to see methylfolate, um, not folic acid. Personally, that is a bad move um, entirely. Like this could actually be problematic in a health context for individuals with methylation issues. Vitamin B12, we have our classic overdose B12 in a energy formula, because that's what we all need. Pentathenic acid at 10 milligrams, calcium at 50. We have our classic electrolytes featured at huge dosages that are definitely useful. Now, let's get into the shit we actually care about. Muscle matrix, creatine monohydrate at three grams. So, are we hitting our bare minimum? Yes, we are. Is this going to be satisfactory for the majority of individuals? Yes, it is. Is this a daily driver pre-workout you can essentially use on a daily basis regardless if you're working out or not, just as a energy formula? Yes, it is. So, hypothetically, this could be, you know, like fully, you know, quite a useful high utility supplement because you can otherwise get, it's not like it's so burdensome on your brain that you couldn't use this on a daily basis as a daily driving product for multifaceted purposes. Like the actual stimulant intake is very, very benign, well tolerated. This is something you could definitely get away with regardless if you're working out or not. So I'm not too concerned about, you know, being able to use this every single day and presumably, um, like, I, I don't know, like I would imagine they want you using it every day because they have fucking beta alanine in here at 1.5 grams. So if we're going to be getting any kind of appreciable buildup of this carnosine um, precursor, we wanna have a supplement that can be taken on a daily basis to actually build up to that actual amount that can yield performance enhancing, you know, ergogenic um, properties. So anyways, the three grams is, uh, you know, bare minimum in my opinion, however, Many individuals would probably benefit from upwards of five grams. Individuals who weigh more, individuals with more muscle mass, individuals who are seeking neurological enhancement, those who are seeking fertility um, enhancement, those who are seeking benefits from a satellite interaction aspect that is not just accounting for um, the bare minimum actions of this compound. Like again, three grams, probably sufficient for many individuals after reaching your saturation, like I said. However, there are individuals with methylation impairments. There are individuals, and again, circling back to the stupidity of having folic acid, individuals who otherwise may benefit from having higher dosages of this. These are going to be the minority of individuals, but again, there is literature to support that five grams or even upwards of fucking 10 grams for an even smaller minority of individuals may otherwise be useful. So. But again, this is supposed to be a the most gen pop appealing product that is broad spectrum applicable for daily application. So therefore, from a you know gut tolerability aspect, from a the most benign minimum effective dose context, yes, this makes sense. Now, estrogen, a proprietary blend of Panax ginseng, 
uh, extract as well as astragalus. So again, compounds on their own, which I am a fan of at efficacious dosages. But again, astragalus, what is this going to be useful for from a you know telomere aspect, from a kidney support aspect, increasing your estimated glomerular filtration rate by supporting the um, health and longevity of your kidneys. This is useful at dosages so much exceeding this that it's fucking baffling that 25 milligrams could be even stated to be a reasonable addition for any sort of benefit other than the potential bioavailability enhancement. Now, again, when it comes to astrogen, do you just throw this shit in and expect it to enhance the effects of whatever the fuck it's in? No, it has to be very, very like targeted for what it's supposed to do. And does it make sense to be adding it in with your creatine monohydrate or your beta alanine or your fucking caffeine when you could otherwise just use a better dose of it? I don't know. Like for me, it seems kind of interesting how this product, when you look at their pre-workouts, if estrogen was such a necessary component for enhancing the absorption of your energy ingredients or your carnosine precursor or your creatine, then why is it that your stack pre-workout that costs twice as much or, you know, you know, significantly more is going to have, let's just say I put in Berry Blast here and we look at nutritional information. Like where the fuck is the estrogen, bro? You still have, you still have citrulline in here. You still have creatine in here. You still have beta alanine in here. You even have the electrolytes in here, higher doses. You have key caffeine, <laughs> you have key, you have caffeine. But yet the estrogen is gone. And why is that? Well, they simply have an efficacious dose of these fucking ingredients and they're like stack pre-workout. So instead of just putting in the effective dose in this shit, which clearly like you could argue, oh, they're making it more useful. It's like, well, why is it that they're more expensive version? They deemed the appropriate modality of getting a more effective utility out of it to just increase the dose. That's what they did in their stack pre-workout that costs more. So is this actually helping or is it just a marketing ploy to enhance bioavailability? That's what I would say, because in general, it seems like when they want to actually put in a good amount of ingredients, they don't include it. Instead, they just put in the proper fucking amount of citrulline, creatine, beta alanine, fucking nitrates and caffeine, you know? So why didn't you just do that in the last one? Well, because instead we can put in this estrogen and make it seem like our barely fucking suboptimal versions of these ingredients are gonna do something more than they can actually do. That's what I interpret this as and then it can let us get away with a cheap gen pop appealing product. That's what I interpret and it seems like they're even reinforcing that statement themselves with their fucking breakdown of ingredients on their packed, stacked, pre-workout that is $45. Now going to the performance composite, we hit beta alanine at 1.5 grams. Is that going to be adequate? Frankly, no. I would want to see at least 3,200 bare minimum and ideally 6,400 if we want to get a buildup to the 179,000 milligram set point that is shown in the literature to actually enhance performance to a significant extent or significant enough that's even fucking useful to begin with, then we would want to see something that can actually appreciably build up to that set point. Now, again, are you going to get some element of performance enhancement in a endurance context, notably not necessarily in an acute like force production sub fucking 12 rep context for most people who are actually using pre-workouts? No, we're not. 1,500 milligrams is not going to build up to any reasonable amount of performance enhancement, in my opinion, even if used daily. I would want to see at least 3,200 in a daily driving pre-workout personally. Micronized L-citrulline, 750 milligrams. Is this hitting any sort of level of minimum effic <laughs> efficacy that is going to equate to any significant nitric oxide production? No, we want to see at minimum, if we see six grams of citrulline malate, we're like, okay, that's like bare minimum, bare bones. You just scrape by. And how much citrulline is that in that citrulline malate yield of two to one ratio that is minimal 4,000 milligrams. So is that even fucking close? No, it's not even close at all. This is definitely a gen pop cheap ass fucking product, frankly, from what I can interpret. Energy and focus complex, acetyl L-carnitine, bruh. L-carnitine, what is the bioavailability of it? Fucking barely anything. When you actually break down how much is going to be yielded out of this, you're in these fucking single digits, essentially. Uh, or double digits, I should say. But again, when we're looking at L-carnitine to actually get an efficacious amount of it, like, we gotta be in the thousands, bro, for L-carnitine from an oral context. If you're gonna be injecting it, okay, 375 milligrams, 
good fucking dose. Are you pinning it into your ass though? No, you're not. You're taking it orally. This is not going to be yielding a amount that's useful whatsoever in my opinion. N-acetyl-L-tyrosine, I would want to see a minimum of 1,000 milligrams of L-tyrosine, frankly. You know, like 750 to 1,000, ideally 1,000. And again, is the N-acetyl version of it useful? From what I've seen in the literature, it seems to be, despite being more water-soluble, whatever, it does not actually yield any significant amount of L-tyrosine in the blood. So when you actually IV this shit, what does it yield in actual L-tyrosine concentrations? Barely fucking anything. We see plasma L-tyrosine levels very, very insignificantly raised when you use N-acetyl L-tyrosine as a, you know, like more water-soluble alternative. It seems like you'd be far better off using straight L-tyrosine and N-acetyl L-tyrosine is actually seen as the subpar version of it nowadays. And this dosage is absolutely pitiful in my opinion. Caffeine, 175 milligrams. That's okay. Yeah, that's going to do something. It'll move the needle. It's a daily driving amount that could otherwise be not overly stimulating, not understimulating, right smack dab in the middle. People with normal tolerances will feel this. Citrus bioflavonoid complex. The fuck is in that? I don't know. 100 milligrams of like hesperidin, you know, naringin or some shit. Like, I don't know. I, I don't even know what this is. Is this fucking citrus bergamot? Like derivative, like components broken down? Like, I don't know what this is. I have no idea, bro. So I don't know. Are we getting some antioxidant, you know, metabolism boosting effects from hundred milligrams of random bioflavonoids? Nope, not really. And frankly, I would not put that in any pre-workout anyways. All right. I think we've sufficiently dismantled that one. Let us move on to C4 original. This is the fucking OG pre-workout from back in the day. Honestly, this video is gonna be really fucking long if I do all of these. If you haven't seen my C4 breakdown, I'm pretty goddamn sure I did it in my dissecting the top five ranked pre-workouts. We had uh, did C4, C4 was in the, it was ranked third. So I definitely went through it and I broke it down sufficiently, I thought. Let me just double check that this was that one. I don't wanna make it sound like I'm just being lazy that I don't wanna dissect it, but frankly, I think a lot of people would get annoyed if I, did the same fucking product twice when I've already dismantled it in a video I've literally can just link to you right here. Um, oh, go fucking like the video, bro. Um, so C4 original, yeah, I definitely broke it down in the last one, or maybe I did, I'm pretty fucking sure I did. Yeah, I think I broke down all the C4s quite sufficiently, so I would go check that out, but from a bird's eye view, it's uh, 30 bucks for the product. I'm gonna be careful not to fucking do the whole thing right now, but, a lot of the same points are going to apply because this is not so much different from the gold standard that we just went through. We have beta alanine at 1.6 grams. Looks pretty fucking familiar. We have the caffeine at um, 150 milligrams. Pretty much the fucking same. N-acetyl L-tyrosine. Frankly, this is like the same goddamn formula except they have creatine nitrate in here which is going to yield some amount. Okay, it's not the same formula. They have a subpar amount of creatine that's barely fucking useful. Nitrate component is going to yield some amount of nitrates that are useful in nitric oxide precursor context. Arginine AKG, not my favorite form of a nitric oxide precursor. Clinical literature suggests L-citrulline is far more efficacious and this dosage is sub-efficacious in my opinion. Holy fuck, n l tyrosine is probably at like 250 milligrams. I can't really tell because it's in a prop blend, but seeing the caffeine at 150, I can kind of sort of extrapolate and assume that the N-acetyl L-tyrosine is probably at like 250. The velvet beam we're probably looking at, I don't know, in the double digits, low or like 100. Um, and T-green in the, you know, doubles, double digits, and the velvet bean at, uh, it's kind of contradictory. Some people use it for sleep. Some people use it for mood elevation. Um, could be useful potentially. The T-green, you know, a smooth stimulant that doesn't have any tolerance buildup associated with it. Seems to have a additive effect with caffeine. However, in practical application, does it actually work that well? No, in my experience, I actually took it out of Gorilla Mind Smooth because I don't like it very much because I didn't really fucking feel anything from it. And most people who take it, especially at double digit dosages, will feel essentially nothing. And it's very fucking expensive for what it produces, which is essentially nothingness. Personally, I think this is just a big hype ingredient. Uh, moving on to number three on the list, we have Gorilla Mode. Oh, it looks pretty interesting. I wonder, wonder what product that is. Oh, it uh, um, has a few different flavors. Oh, that's an uh, interesting flavor profile. Oh, it has 350 milligrams of caffeine, nine grams of pretty fucking decent, three grams of glycer pump. Most potent pre workout on Amazon. Look at our label. Interesting marketing, bro. Interesting. Um, <laughs> 
it's funny because I didn't actually like, I would put more shit than this, but Amazon has, you know, you can only do so much stuff. Interesting enough, I think we are the only product that does not have brand registry. So we just have like this clusterfuck disaster of like our product description. Do we even have a fucking product description anymore? <laughs> like this is fucking it, dude. Like we have these uh, top products. They have, uh, it's called brand registry where you can like, down here you can put all this like great marketing shit like you can put like comparisons of like your different products you can put these awesome graphics of like the guy holding the bottle you can put what is like you have all this room for putting in graphics and shit putting in breakdowns of your ingredients how you use it why blah 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 like the fact that you can put in custom graphics at all and comparisons and stuff obviously hugely beneficial and cross link between your products and then we don't have brand registry it's just like it's just like this like that's all we can fucking put in there apparently uh, we're trying to get brand registry by the way but it's uh it takes a while so you know obviously we're like the new kids on the block essentially so we don't yet have privileges to fucking put that so we just have like this fucking pitiful three line thing whereas everyone else is like giant marketing things compare with similar items um yeah so like this isn't made by us this is just made by amazon so anyways if you want to look at our breakdowns um right now we're actually priced at 39 bucks because of a flash sale which might be it's probably done by the time this video goes up unfortunately but uh, regular price honestly it changes sometimes it's 44 sometimes it's 49 kind of depends on in inventory but we shove a coupon code in your face and as well as I do, you know, on my uh, video descriptions, it's there every single video for 10% off. So like this 39 bucks is actually $36, $35 and 10 cents for our pre-workout when you use my coupon code at checkout. Or even if it was like the max price, it's like, I don't know, 40, it's like 44 bucks or something like that with my coupon code. And hopefully we get to a point where I'm hoping once we have all the flavors in stock perpetually, we do something where it's like once a week we have like a flash sale on one specific flavor and we kind of like rotate it. So like every week we have like one new flavor that's like flashed for 39 bucks, which after coupon code is like 35 bucks. So I think that's a pretty fucking great deal, honestly, for the formula. Um, like you're not going to get more stacked than this for the price, in my opinion. Um, and obviously, if you haven't seen my Gorilla Mode breakdown, if you want to hear me scientifically dismantle my own product, I'll put up a card in the description to Gorilla Mode pre-workout review or pre-workout breakdown, whatever I called it. I put it out in October of, October 30th, 2019 was the launch of Gorilla Mode. And um, yeah, I basically break all these things down for an hour and a half almost. So if you wanna see a fucking movie on a pre-workout, it's timestamped though, so it's not as cumbersome as it sounds. You can literally jump through like to the different parts you wanna see and put it on two times speed so you can really bomb through it or just go read my article on morepleatsmoredays.com haven't wrote articles in a while, but I wrote a pretty fucking comprehensive one with all of the citations mentioned or linked for you to actually go dig into these studies yourself to see the clinical literature that supports these statements regarding the ingredients as mentioned in the video or in the article. So anyways, um, I don't think I need to dismantle it. Personally, I've done it in an hour and a half video already. So you can check that out if you are interested. But anyway, pretty fucking cool to see this here. Let's get to number four, Amino Lean by RSP. I had never heard of this until I really dug into it, seeing it in the top five. So this product is priced at, let's see, it is, like one thing you'll note about most of these products in the top five is they're very gen pop appealing. They're very cheap in general because most people that are on Amazon, frankly, don't know, like, don't give a fuck about the most stacked, efficacious, fucking, you know, every vector of performance. They just want like a good tasting, like good, like useful, high utility, daily driving pre-workout that works. So they'll get shit like, you know, C4 or gold standard or amino lean apparently, which honestly surprised me because this is what I see to be the worst one of the top five by far, but it has a fuck ton of top rated comments, 23,322 ratings, but maybe that's because it's so cheap. I don't know, but it says here, uh, or it's 70 servings. Maybe that's why it's so fucking popular. I don't know, but here we go. It is um, $18.67 apparently on their website for, oh, I guess that's the 30 serving version is 18 bucks. And the 70 serving one is 33. Okay, that makes a bit more sense. So let's look at the 30 serving version. We have nutritional facts. 
So, okay, this is like uglier to look at, so I'm gonna go to the Amazon one. So if you look at the label on the Amazon page, you see per two scoops is a serving size and we have an amino acid blend of five grams comprised of undisclosed amount of taurine, carnosine, beta alanine, glutamine, arginine, leucine, citrulline, isoleucine, valine, tyrosine, histidine, lysine, phenylalanine, threonine, methionine. Now that sounds pretty comprehensive, but at the end of the day, it is amino acid blend and some of these are just derivatives too and they are not necessarily like a comprehensive EAA product that would otherwise yield an efficacious amount of aminos in my opinion at all. If you look at Gorilla, Mo Gorilla Mode, EAA is like, we're in the fucking double digits, bro. We have five grams of undisclosed amounts of like an antioxidant at the beginning, taurine. Is taurine useful? Yeah, I think so. I think it's good for cramps. I think it's good for preventing toxicity in your fucking balls from 19 nors. It's, a, it's good for a lot of different things. Um, is it useful as a pre-workout supplement? Um, it can be. It's not one of my favorite ingredients to really like take up space, frankly. Um, and that's why I, I supplement with it separately, actually, myself. And it's more for the health aspect rather than the performance enhancement. Beta alanine, at some dosage that's undisclosed, we can only assume it's probably in the like one to two gram range at best, given that they have a fuck ton of other aminos in here. Third highest, most concentrated ingredient in this blend is L-glutamine. So what, we have like 700 milligrams of like a fucking gut health promoting supplement or ingredient here. We have arginine, like the worst NO precursor fucking since NOM. We have leucine at an amount that is not even going to stimulate mTOR. We have citrulline at a dosage that's so pitiful you might as well ball slap me. And then we have a bunch of other aminos and frankly, it's just not even worth commenting on the rest of them. Weight management blend at 1.5 grams. We have L-carnitine at a dosage that will do nothing. At best, this is probably at a gram, which will yield ultimately 150 milligrams of actual bioavailable L-carnitine. Is that going to be useful in a fatty acid uh, mobilization context? Is that going to be useful in a androgen receptor content upregulation context? Is it gonna be useful in a fucking anything context? Not really, bro. Not really, this is why we sell a separate Gorilla Mode AR product that you can actually get a multiple gram dose. If you want to get an efficacious use, <laughs> a high utility use out of a low dosage of carnitine, you need to be injecting it. So if you wanted to use a gram of carnitine, like I can only speculate, this is probably at like a gram, given that the, the second ingredient is this conjugated linoleic acid followed by green tea. And like green tea, we wanna be seeing like what, like 500 milligrams at least, and then in a bio, like I imagine, at least in like, we're, we're at best pushing a gram of L-carnitine from what I can tell, just extrapolating. And these shouldn't even be in prop blends because this, this is me trying to fucking guess what the fuck is in here and then explaining if it's useful or not at the undisclosed dosages we can assume at best the L-carnitine's at like 750 to 1,000 milligrams and it's not going to be useful at that dosage unless you're fucking injecting it. InnoBio at undisclosed dosage for conjugated linoleic acid. Do I care about weight management in my pre-workout at all, to be honest? Green tea and green coffee bean extract. Like, okay, maybe we can make an argument for some minor, you know, actual metabolism upregulating properties or... Um, some sort of energy expenditure or energy in general. But ultimately, like this is not a utility of green tea that I care to see. Like there's a reason why you can use this in a like a PM formula of a fat burner without it being too problematic from a caffeine yield context. Now they have green coffee at the bottom here, but I don't know how much is fucking in it. I don't know how much, like they have caffeine in their energy set section. So presumably this is the main form of the caffeine at the 130 milligrams. So the green tea, like let's just assume it's for the, like it's in the weight management blend section, so I can only assume it's for the fat burning properties, which I would want to see at least 500 milligrams personally. So as far as the weight management blend goes, like I would want to see a higher dose of L-carnitine. Um, the green tea, like maybe it's at an adequate dosage, but frankly, like it's doubtful given that 1500 milligrams is the entire composition of the blend. So this is probably at like 250 milligrams at best. And you know, like ultimately it's not like the energy expenditure increase from adding in adequate EGCG is that significant anyways. And do we care about that in a pre-workout context? No, I would want to be in a fat burner, not in a fucking pre-workout. Energy and focus blend, it, like 
from a performance context, I want things that are going to enhance like fucking contractions, mind muscle connection, endurance, force production, muscle fucking motor unit recruitment. Like shit like that is actually useful pre-workout, not a fucking shitty amino blend, a weight management blend that's also shitty. And then 130 milligrams of caffeine because ultimately, and again, like we have Innova T, like we have fucking trademark caffeine, bro. Like, is it really, do we, do we really need trademark caffeine? Is caffeine and hydras generically not sufficient? Do we really need to try and convince you that fucking Innova T is better than normal caffeine? Come on, theobromine additive to your caffeine, undisclosed dosage. So what, we're looking at like 100 milligrams of caffeine followed by 30 milligrams of theobromine are those like we're looking at at best like a strong fucking coffee you know like that's literally what we have here is we have a strong coffee with some taurine a little bit of butthole itches maybe from the beta alanine and that's ultimately it maybe slight amounts of you know slight fat burning energy expenditure potential like a fucking extra 30 calories burned maybe like who knows but no this is the worst pre-workout of the entire top five in my opinion not impressed personally okay now in number five we have total war by redcon one so this is um always in the mix for one of the top products because this is one of the fastest growing biggest companies in the game right now and i mentioned at the start that their prices have i don't know if they've been increased because on amazon it seems like they still have 29.99 for some of the products 37.99 here um i don't know let me see oh this is 30 servings pack of one i'm just trying to decipher what the fuck i'm even looking at here um let's go with uh yeah like 29.99 yeah like some of them i guess i don't know i don't know if this is going to happen for all the products but um um like we're looking at either 30 dollars upwards of 43 dollars right now and the breakdown of the formula let's get into that so um a transparent formula fortunately this is like the only fucking product in the top five that doesn't have like I guess hypothetically, these aren't prop blends because they disclose in the optimum nutrition breakdown what you're getting. It's just sub efficacious as hell. C4, um, classic, you know, prop blend with you know subpar ingredients and the rest of it. RSP, the actual most garbage prop blends I've ever seen with totally untransparent dosages. And then we have Redcon One, which is like the most actual like stacked pre-workout of those um, with a fully transparent label with actual dosages that could be useful. So citrulline malate two to one ratio of citrulline and malic acid, they actually specify here, this is what it is, not just citrulline malate two to one, they actually say here ratio of L-citrulline and malic acid, which I don't know if their label used to say that, but if they updated it, then good on them because that is more transparent than just saying, you know, citrulline malate six grams, which makes it implied that you have these six grams of like, actual citrulline to work towards your performance enhancement which you do not you have fucking 4,000 and then 2,000 milligrams of malic acid although i still would like to see this broken up on the label as it should be in my opinion because this is not chemically bonded together at the end of the day this is just mixed in a fucking vat so this is not the same ingredient this is two separate ingredients so anyways four grams of citrulline and two grams of malic acid is that efficacious bare minimum yes it is though beta alanine 3.2 grams is that efficacious just hitting the mark in my opinion for a daily driver i would rather see upwards of 6400 if you actually want to build up to that 179 gram set point 3200 milligrams though is like just you're just fucking hitting it it's gonna take you a goddamn while though to build up agmatine agmatine sulfate at one gram this is an interesting ingredient that has um interactions with uh pain thresholds can actually help you potentially push through in more like t mentally taxing sets, I should say. It also has interesting interactions with nitric oxide synthase isoforms where it selectively seems to upregulate endothelial nitric oxide synthase whilst concurrently inhibiting neuronal nitric oxide synthase and inducible nitric oxide synthase. So hypothetically, from what we've seen, seen in the literature, although slightly extrapolated and in practical application this is how it seems to play out though fortunately it seems to have an additive effect with other no pre precursors given the selective enhancement of the nitric oxide synthase expression that we actually want for skeletal muscle slash performance enhancement now there is some n expression in muscle as well 
However, it seems to be that ENOS is the isoform that we are most concerned with given the you know neurotoxicity and certain other outcomes associated with um, the other isoforms that are effectively inhibited by agmatine sulfate. Now this may have um, consequences with um, when you're using other NO precursors that are essentially up like enhancing NO production significantly. Like agmatine is also used in like a neurological health like protection aspect and you are essentially negating those benefits when you're using shit like you know l-citrulline on top of your agmatine but again ultimately we're using this for performance enhancement slash um like vasodilation in the gym so it's a bit less of a concern if you're like negating the neurological neurological component a bit of agmatine given that the main vector of performance we're trying to drive out of it is literal vasodilation of the fucking systems that you're trying to upregulate in the gym rather than trying to, you know, selectively target some sort of like uh, um, brain health, like neuronal death attenuation shit or something like that. Now, like for me, this ingredient personally, it does have an additive effect with NO precursors and it's why I've selected it personally as well. Um, and it works through a totally different vector of NO um, utilization. So to me, it has utility above and beyond the standard citrulline kind of like NO backbone as the foundation of a pre-workout. So I like this ingredient and I see um, applications with it that are very, very interesting that go above and beyond standard, makes your veins pop a bit more. Taurine, again, the antioxidant that protects your balls from nandrolone a little bit, also good for muscle cramps, also good as an antioxidant, also good for multiple different things. As a pre-workout ingredient, um, I don't think it's overly, I don't know, like to me, I don't, uh, like I mentioned, I already mentioned where I use this ingredient, so I'm not gonna delve into it too much, too much more, but ultimately, is it useful at this dose? Like, yeah, it's good. Caffeine and hydrates 250 milligrams, potent as fuck for some individuals, for other stim junkies, they'll be like, oh, that's so weak. You know, ultimately, you can't really hate on 250 milligrams of caffeine and hydrates plus dicaffeine malate 100 milligrams, yielding a slower, more sustained form of caffeine, consequently yielding a total caffeine burden of about 320 milligrams. Like, that's fairly significant given that they also have 50 milligrams of theobromine on top, um, they also have the green tea leaf extract, although not overly stimulating. And frankly, this dosage does not really do fucking anything. So I'm not really sure why it's in there actually, to be honest, now that I'm looking at it. Juniper extract. This is something that from what I recall is a diuretic. Like, I don't know why you would be using juniper personally, like for me. So personally, I've seen this mentioned as like a antiseptic. I've seen it talked about as something that could relieve, uh, attenuate oxidative stress potentially in some contexts. Um, but mainly I've seen it marketed as a like decent diuretic. So this is something that's going to make you less hydrated from what I've seen. So I don't see how this has significant utility in a pre-workout context. Now I've seen mentions of it making caffeine more effective, but again, like why would I want to be using a diuretic ingredients to make my caffeine more effective when I could otherwise just use more caffeine? Now again, caffeine has a diuretic effect as well, but I mean, I would rather get the fucking caffeine at a higher dose and get whatever diuresis I get out of the caffeine and just take care of that rather than having a new entirely separate ingredient that acts on its own as a apparently a potent diuretic to enhance the caffeine effects that's also a diuretic in some aspects. So again, we're having like two fucking things that are not ideal for hyperhydration in the muscle just to get a better effect out of your stimulant like just use more fucking stimulant you know that's what i would that's what i would conclude personally um but maybe i'm missing the mark on that but that is what i would conclude with the juniper and the naringa at 25 milligrams this is a bioflavonoid that can be useful in my opinion um for weight management in some context it seems to be um, useful for kind of like metabolic purposes. It's not essentially, it's not something that's going to give you a pre-workout like punch though and then like a motor unit recruitment, like mental energy aspect. So I'm not really sure what utility it has in a pre-workout at 25 milligrams. Um, like do they have it in here? Key ingredients, caffeine, citrulline, beta alanine, taurine, agamantine. Do they have anything in here about the, no, I don't see any mention. Maybe they mentioned it somewhere, but I don't understand the Naringin at 25 milligrams unless it is, you know, again, marketed to enhance the bioavailability of the stimulants in some capacity. However, 
Like, it's not like caffeine is hard to just like use a bit of more. Like, why do we need like significant ways to enhance it? Like I would understand if you were trying to prevent its breakdown potentially to prolong its effects. If you were using some like novel stimulant that otherwise is like, I don't know, like easily cleaved by MAO or some shit and you're trying to like inhibit the process by which it degrades in the body, whereas caffeine, like it's not like you have some sort of like unique vector of trying to prevent degradation that otherwise needs addressing like a, I don't know, a PEA analog or some shit. So I'm not really sure where the application of the juniper and the naringin really comes in in this formula because it's not like an exotic stim blend. This is like a very mainstream appealing, like heavy hitting, but gen pop appealing still product. And when I say heavy hitting, I mean by like gen pop standards, like this is going to shit on your six star Walmart pre-workout. This is going to shit on RSP. This is going to shit on C4. This is going to shit on optimum nutrition far more potent than those. And then at the bottom, we have the biopairing, which is the you know, black pepper fruit extract that is standardized to 95% piperine. It's the trademark format of it. Um, like ultimately, that this is going to be used to inhibit um, the degradation of your stimulants, make them last longer, make them more bioavailable. Um, it's effective CYP3A4 and P glycoprotein inhibitor, but it also has mild MAO inhibiting properties. So that's where it could be useful with stimulants like, you know, PEA and PEA analogs potentially. However, when it comes to caffeine in itself, um, like I don't necessarily see the utility of like, sure, like maybe you could argue for it, but I don't really know if it's like worth adding it in just to deal with like caffeine itself. Um, if I had some sort of exotic stimulant in it that otherwise interacted with those processes, then maybe I could see the utility for it a bit more. But ultimately, like you have a sustained form of caf caffeine in here with the dicaffeine malate. So I'm not really sure if there's, you couldn't have just put in more of that potentially. I don't know. Like, you know, ultimately they have a reason for their shit. That's just my interpretation of it. But of the uh, top five, that is, uh, that's my breakdown of them. Um, obviously I'm heavily biased towards, you know, rank number three and hopefully that's rank number one fucking soon. That would be cool. So, you know, you know, check us out on Amazon. Some of our shit's FBA now, by the way. So if you want to check it out, we do have Fulfilled by Amazon, which is cool because for a while we didn't. And to be honest, I'm not even 100% sure which flavors are FBA, but maybe check it out and find out because free shipping is cool and it's fast on Amazon. But of these, uh, in ah, fuck, of, <laughs> but of the, I was going to say compounds, of these products, which one do I think is the best of the top five? Otherwise, I would say a Total War by a landslide, bro. So anyways, that is my interpretation and scientific dismantling of these products. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All the comments help the algorithm. They're much appreciated. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplacemoredates. Facebook, Snapchat, BitChute, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. I said BitChute, but don't fucking follow me there. Follow me on everywhere but there. If you want to support the channel, check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. Gorilla Mind, Nootropic Formulas, Gorilla Mode, Pre-Workout Formulas, I designed myself from scratch. Uh -huh. And uh, my uh, clinic, HRT, as well as anything uh, preventative medicine related, we're pretty fucking turnkey, and I recommend you get a high quality doctor in your camp to stay as healthy and dialed in as possible, as well as my recommended diet model for sports performance and gaining maximum amounts of muscle. Um, and anything else I'm associated with, it is all in the video description below. And your support is very much appreciated as I would not be here without you guys. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.